expected trade loss as a concept continues to fascinate some and frustrate others. The idea is amazing. Why should we make loss provisions when things have already gone bad? Should we rather not be making provisions when things look like they can go bad? The so-called incurred loss model that was there in IS 39 resulted in provisions getting recognized far too late, as was experienced in the 2008 financial crisis. Banks had to create provisions and take the hit on their capital when they could least afford it, resulting in severe and even terminal crisis for some. Something had to change, and hence the new expected credit loss model introduced in IFRS 9 that expects entities to create loss provisions based on not just the historical experience but also current economic circumstances and expectations about the future. It's a particularly complex idea to implement. There are just too many models, a lot of data to analyze and far too many points of judgment and estimates. In the upcoming blog series, we hope to help you with some of these concepts. Hi, I'm Jatin Kagra, Director in Grand Thornton Bharat's CFO Services team. Our team has helped more than 50 financial services institutions implement and review ECL models. We have worked across various regions like South Asia, Southeast Asia, Australia, Middle East and Sub-Saharan Africa. Today, we'll give you a short introduction of what the various components of ECL are and the typical models which are used. ECL is typically broken down into probability of default, loss given default, and exposure default. The product of these three is your ECL. Probability of default or PD is a percentage chance that the loan would default. <coughs> loss given default or LGD is the percentage amount that would be lost on a loan that does default. While exposure default or EAD is the expected amount that would be there on that future date of default. And therefore, it would consider things like drawdown of future amounts, repayments and prepayments till the expected date of default. All three are essentially estimates and therefore there are a range of models and techniques which are used to calculate them. Which model to select depends on the nature and structure of the underlying portfolio. In today's video, we'll share some perspective on you know what these different components are and what kind of models are typically used to practice. We'll start with PD first. PD of course would look at calculating how many of your loans would default in the future. And there are different models here. There are certain models which are simple and which are typically used when you're dealing with situations like trade receivables, so very short term uh, loans. But then there are some which are more useful for low default portfolios and where you have limitations around data which is available. Then there are some which take impact of macroeconomic uh, variables and help you consider it in a more simplistic manner. But then there are some which use statistical relationship, correlation, a lot of data analytics to take impact of future economic circumstances and would help you create more robust uh, estimates. There are various possibilities in a subsequent video which focuses on PD in particular. We'll talk about these concepts in more detail. Talking about LGD now, how do we estimate how much amount we lose on a loan which defaults? Well, first thing to consider is generally how much have we lost on loans which have defaulted in the past and hence for entities who have the historical data a discounted cash flow approach which uses uh, you know historical recovery uh, amounts can be used to determine the workout LGD but may often be useful to use regression or machine learning LGD models which can be trained to identify which variables impact recovery rates and therefore are more responsive to variations in type and structure of loans nature of collateral and also changing economic circumstances. Then there are situations where market data might be a good input to use for calculation of recovery amount. The market LGD approach however can only be used typically for traded instruments. If 
none of these aforementioned approaches are feasible, then entities might need to make use of regulatory proxies or use heuristic estimates to calculate their risk. And finally, there's EAD. Complex area in its own right, especially when you're dealing with revolving facilities or instruments like credit cards and all. Sometimes entities may be able to simply consider the balance sheet outstanding as their EAD for on balance sheet exposures. However, for more complex scenarios, you might need to consider typical maturity pattern, prepayment behavior, and prepayment rates for more accurate EAD estimates. It is for the off balance sheet exposures though, the use of CCF complicates things quite significantly. We'll again talk about EAD in a subsequent video. So lots to consider, hence we have planned a 7 part video series which would each cover a critical aspect and go into details around that. Hope you have found this overview discussion insightful and are looking forward to these subsequent videos. Until that time, thank you very much.